Screeding is one step in building or remodeling that most do-it-yourselfers avoid. We have a viewer duo, Sarah and Paul. Hi, I'm Sarah. And I'm Paul. I'm Sarah's father. They show us in a demo house that it is child's play with a DIY kit. With Stainus, you can install a floor structure yourself, which allows a professional end result for which you don't need any experience, and we do it using this grid. Paul and Sarah, do you have experience with screeding? I've never screeded before. I've only seen it being done. It doesn't look easy to no. me either. When I saw that, I thought, no, this is definitely not my cup of tea. With that level and... Oh, no, it doesn't look easy to me. Yes, maybe today we'll see how we can do it ourselves. Yes, yes. With the necessary curiosity, Paul and Sarah start. Hello. Hello. Good morning, Sarah. Hello. Look, I've brought the Starnis grid. Um, we're going to start building immediately. And, as you can see, the Starnis grid, slats and legs, mm -hmm. can be clicked together. So actually, just with that tab, say, just click them together here. Ah, uh, yes, okay. And if you want to take them apart again, you can click it yes. apart like you would with Meccano. Yeah. The tab away, yes. Even um, you can adjust the leg itself using the screwdriver. So basically just turn. Ah, yes, to adjust the height. Yeah, yeah. The legs themselves can also be adjusted from 4.5 centimeters to 9 centimeters. Up to 9 centimeters. Um, we also have extension legs. So That's the there. thickness of the screed then. Yeah, yeah. That is the thickness of the screed yes. that you can regulate with this. So, actually, you can always add those slats and legs. And you basically make squares for the entire floor. I can show it here. And then you place your grid, possibly also the screwdriver. Okay, yes. And then you can adjust the height. Yes, so that the whole, whole grid is level. Yeah. And reaches the same height. Yes, if this is level, then you really can't go wrong with your screen. Everything you pour in, so to speak, comes out nicely flat. So, um, once that material has been poured in, that grid stays put, I suppose? Yep, yep. The grid actually stays in the screen. That is very important, because this is basically the reinforcement in the screen. Um, it actually ensures that it divides the screen into small sections of 50 by 50 centimeters. Mm -hmm. So it relieves all tensions. Oh, uh, yes. And you don't even need expansion joints in your screed, or in your tiles. So from an aesthetics point of view, that's very beautiful. Um, you no longer need a decoupling mat either. Then the underfloor heating can start up faster. Numerous advantages, in other words, compared to ordinary traditional screed. So that's all a plus if you place it yourself. Okay, yes. Um, so actually, the grid is basically built up row by row, and you can find all that information on our website with videos and text, manuals in other words, uh, the website is www.starnis.com. Uh, if there are any questions, you can always call us or send us an email, and we'll answer that question. Is that also possible during the weekend? Yep, it's also possible during the weekend. Okay. Great. So it's a bit like playing, yes. huh? Yes. Okay, yeah. Always place construction foil and edge insulation before you start screening. We already did that when we installed the underfloor heating. Right, There's okay. There's the first grid. Then I'll start on the second right away. That goes smoothly. That's the purpose. Okay. And now, Dad, do you know how to do that? I think you can cut those pieces to size. Yes. Um, so these... Should I check the website? Yes, let's take a look. Yes, here it is. Ah, uh, okay, here it comes. Okay, so first measure how much. And then cut. And then with a the grinder, yes? Okay. Here, we click this one in like this, in it, and then here sideways. We are going to attach the system. A total of three different click connections are possible, so the grid can be made to fit in every room. I watched the video on the internet, okay. and so we have to click that in here, because otherwise if we screed here, oh, those are the holes. then it can run down here, and then you can't click yes. it in anymore. It doesn't cause a problem if a leg rests on the pipe of your underfloor heating. 
You can also adjust a slat locally to a height of up to 1.5 centimeters to work around any pipes. There, the last one of the row. And then we have to level it, right? Yes, and I think we're going to use the laser. A reference must always be determined for the placement of screen, preferably by using a laser. Your end finish should be flush with the sill. So subtract the thickness of the finish from the height of your sill and you know how high your screed should be. Indicate this on a support block as a reference. There. The grids can be placed at a height of 4.5 cm to 9 cm. Do you want to go even higher? Then you use an extension leg or you can put something hard under the legs. While the floor grid is being pieced together, we can get the screed to pour out. You can provide it yourself or rent a silo from Starness. The silo ensures that you can immediately make fresh screed and that during several weeks. Divide section by section and smooth out each grid with the screeding trowel. The connection to the wall mustn't be forgotten. Preferably work in pairs. One person prepares the screed and pours it out while the other completes the grid sections. Sometimes some holes remain. Then you can manually add some extra screed and polish again. Make circular movements with a large sanding board. This way you make everything nice and even. Meanwhile, the following grid pieces can already be put together. And of course, they also need to be adjusted to the right height. It's a task you can complete at your own pace. Take into account the volume of screed you will be able to process. But the advantage of the grid is that if you are short of time, you can decide to continue only a few rows and pick up where you've left off at a later time without having to place an expansion joint. When polishing, you cannot avoid some holes and streaks. What could be the cause? Call the helpline for some additional information. Yeah, hello, Sarah Van Imp speaking. Uh, I'm working on the screed here, but I have a small problem. Um, always when polishing, somehow I get streaks in there. Uh, I was wondering, how can I prevent it? Uh, yep, basically your screeding trowel is tilted too much. Basically you can only hold it up by a maximum of one centimeter and uh, then you can polish it evenly. Then you don't scrape it off, but you polish it effectively. And also make sure that your screed trowel is clean and uh, then it actually works. It'll work perfectly. Using the new tip, polishing is already a lot easier. Arriving at the last row, you will soon see the end result. The floor structure is level finished and nicely polished. Once it's dry, you can place different floor finishes on it but you can also fill in the grids differently. Outside, for example, you can use a drainage mortar for your terrace. Or you can start working indoors with floor insulating screed. This is a cement base supplemented with EPS pearls, which gives you an insulating underlayer. You make the mortar using water and additives. Mix them into a homogeneous mass using a concrete mixer. Due to the EPS pearls, the volume created is not heavy to transport with your concrete tub. Now as well, fill grid by grid. In terms of method, you work identically. Pour out and divide per section to finally finish with your trowel. The screed layer is accessible after about 48 hours. Then you can continue building up your floor with OSB and a floating floor covering. Or you can opt for insulating screed that can be tiled directly to obtain a lower floor structure. You can also complete the build-up using dry fillers, such as recycled aerated concrete granules. These are lighter than traditional screed, which can offer an advantage during renovations. And furthermore, you don't need water, so you can finish immediately. Here as well, you can finish with an OSB and floating floor.
for final fixing, screw the OSB into the underlying grids. You can also use rock wool as a filler, but then you have to pay extra attention to the fixation of the legs. More information about all options can be found on the website. So, Paul and Sarah, how did the screeding go? It went very well. I never thought I could place a screed floor myself. That framework has its merits. Placing the screed is an easy task. The big advantage, I think, is that you work tile by tile, so you don't have to do the floor in one go. The big difference is that the physical effort is significantly lower with this method compared to the classic method. And the end result is really good. The floor is flat and is nicely finished, so yes.